morning, Del Oro. Today is Friday, October 21st. Let's get right into our daily announcements. Del Oro FFA wants to hear from any students interested in riding horses in the homecoming parade. See Mrs. Dvorak in room 614 if you're interested. The homecoming dance starts at 8 p.m. on Saturday, October 29th. Doors close at 9 p.m. and all school rules are in effect during the dance. All students must bring their 2011-2012 ID, and if you don't have that, temporary IDs cost $10 at the door. Guest passes can be attained from Miss Locke after a couple's bid has been bought. Monday's dress-up day is babies versus geezers. Be sure to get points for your class at both lunches for dressing up like someone young or old. Here's the Beaks Amanda to tell us about every single dress-up day next week. Homecoming week starts on Monday. Are you ready for the dress-up days? Monday is baby versus geezer. Tuesday, rags to riches. I'm just a poor boy, nobody loves me. Wednesday, past versus future. Thursday, your class color or your superhero. And Friday is black and gold. We hope to see everyone dress up next week. Have fun with it. Now back to you guys. Thanks, Amanda. I can't wait to see everyone dressed up. It's going to be awesome. Homecoming week is the best way for everyone to show their school spirit in different ways. Absolutely. Juniors, your food night is next Monday. Freshmen is Tuesday. Sophomores, Wednesday. And seniors, Thursday. If you want snacks to help get you through the work night, then remember to bring in donations of food into the leadership room. All the sports teams have been doing so well at Del Oro. Here's Tucker and AJ with their weekly sports report. The Del Oro Beak presents the DO Sports Report with Tucker Fader and AJ Newby. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Hey Eagles, this is the Del Oro Sports Report. I'm Tucker Fader. And I'm AJ Newby, and I'm about to educate you on some sports. <laughs> get it, Tucker? Yeah, educate. We get it. Okay, let's kick things off with boys soccer. Early last week, they tied Rockland in a tense one-to-one -one game. Although the Eagles took the lead early on, there were several fouls and red cards, which ultimately led to a PK and a goal for the Thunder to tie it up. They also played Nevada Union last Friday, and that ended in a tie as well. Finally, they played Granite Bay on Wednesday and were beaten 5-0. Their record is now 2-8-5, and, and they are in fifth place in league. Hopefully they can salvage their season and come away with wins in their final games. Well, good luck, guys. Let's keep things moving with girls' tennis. The girls are having a solid season as they have only lost two league matches this year. Hopefully their success will continue as they finish up the season. Girls' volley took on, volleyball took on Rockland on Tuesday, and with a huge crowd on hand, the Eagles dropped a heartbreaker, losing 3-1. to one. They are now 5-2 and two in league and are in third place behind Rockland and Granite Bay. Their next game is against Granite Bay, so hopefully they can capture another win and make a run for playoffs. Best of luck, girls. All right, well, varsity football played Nevada Union last week for what was called the NorCal Game of the Week by Rivals.com. This was a huge game for both teams because while Doro was hoping to extend a four-game winning streak, Nevada Union was trying to end their six-game SFL losing streak. Since being realigned in 2010, Nevada Union has an 0-6 record in the Sierra Foothill League, and unfortunately for them, this streak was prolonged by the Eagles. Defensively, both teams came out ready to play, but unfortunately they struggled offensively and the first half ended with a 14-11 Del Oro lead after Brendan Monroe ran the ball for a touchdown. Things quickly turned around, however, when running back Nick O'Sullivan fumbled the ball on the opening kick of the second half, which led to an NU comeback. Throughout the second half, the two teams traded scores as the Del Oro defense struggled against Nevada Union's passing game, led by quarterback Kyle Cota. The real story in this game, however, came in the last 40 seconds of the game when the Eagles refused to give up and eventually took back the lead. A major reason for this victory can be accredited to quarterback Bobby Hetherington, who completed 17 passes in 19 attempts and threw for 197 yards. Hetherington was also responsible for the go-ahead touchdown pass to Russell Smith to lead the Eagles to a 35-31 victory. By now, you all know that what week it is. It's Beat Granite Bay Week. Highlighted by Thursday night's bonfire, this week is shaping up to be a battle of the titans. 6-1 Granite Bay comes into a hostile environment tonight to face off with Del Oro's own 6-1 Golden Eagles. Del Oro has won the past two meetings with the Grizzlies and looks to become the first team to win three in a row. Granite Bay hopes to upend the high-flying Eagles offense, which is averaging 45 points a game. Ranked 22nd and 24th in state, the higher-ranked Eagles look to defend their rank against the SFL foe in what could shape up to be the game of the year. All right, well, that about wraps things up for this week. For The Beak, 
I'm AJ Newby. And I'm Tucker Fader. Go get them, Eagles. The Delaware Beak presents the DO Sports Report with Tucker Fader and AJ Newby. Thanks, Tucker. Thanks, AJ. What a great way to stay updated. Yeah, especially for those students who don't go to those games. Game day shirts are on sale today through Wednesday, October 26th at lunch for $15. Get them quick before they sell out. If you are wearing black and gold today, then look for the cheerleaders at lunch who will be handing out prizes for those who show their Delaware spirit. Go D.O. The annual cheer spaghetti feed is um, tonight behind the Eagle's Nest during the JV and Varsity football games. It is only $10 for delicious spaghetti, salad, bread, and dessert. Vegetarian options are also available. Money raised goes to the Tradition of Excellence Scholarships. Tackle for the Cure is a big deal here at Delaro, but football isn't the only sport that raises awareness toward breast cancer. The tennis team also has their own Pink Day. Here's the Beaks' Kristen to give us some more information. This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The entire tennis team showed their support by having a Pink Day tournament. They wore pink, played with pink tennis balls, and had a pink party. They also celebrated powerful women by having three tennis moms tell their story. We celebrate Pink Day every year and it's to talk about breast cancer awareness and um, life stories that people have had with dealing with cancer. From the Beak, I'm Kristen. Back to you. Thanks, Kristen. I'm so glad to hear that DO Sports are supporting us. Yeah, Delaware does a really good job of having a game for sport um, go towards breast cancer. American River College will be here Monday, October 24th. ARC College <laughs> offers these programs that Sierra does not have. Hospitality Management, Interior Design, Culinary Arts, Gerontology, Energy, and Crime Prevention. The Art Institutions will be here October 25th. They offer degrees in culinary arts, baking and pastry, graphic design, web design, digital filmmaking, video production, media arts and animation, game art and design, and interior design. All seniors here at Delaware are probably scrambling around to get those college applications filled out. Here's Anya's informational video this week tell, telling students about the event Flash on Your Future. The counseling department here at Delaro has organized a college campaign event called Flash on Your Future. Lots of representatives from in-state, out-of-state, and private schools are visiting us throughout the upcoming weeks to give college workshops to any students who are interested in attending college. To see the full schedule, check out the calendar on the counselor's link on the Delaro website. Here's Mrs. Montgomery with more info. Well, we are smack dab in the middle of Flash on Your Future, and we hope that you've been able to come over to the College and Career Center to listen to one of our college reps that we've had. We still have some really exciting ones coming out. We have Stanford University will be here, University of Arizona, the Citadel, and Notre Dame. Go into the counseling office to sign up for one of the workshops. Reporting to you from the Beak, I'm Anya. That was a great video, Anya. Watching it definitely gave me more information on colleges. Thank you. I learned a lot about colleges while filming it. Attention students, if you have a learner's permit or a driver's license, you may be eligible for a student scholarship to attend a teen car control clinic. You will get expert training on skid control and hazard avoidance at the same faculties the race car drivers train. This one-day event takes place in November, so please see Officer Barry or Ms. Montgomery in the counseling office if you are interested. Everyone saw the commotion going on in the senior court last Tuesday. Here's the Beaks Jay telling us a little bit about what went on. Earlier this week on Tuesday, Mr. Kernett's class was seen doing their semi-annual bridge project. The competition began during second block right after brunch on the senior quad. I asked senior Tucker Fader what the project was all about. We're uh, testing to see how, how much weight our bridges will hold for a uh, physics project. So what exactly is the goal of your bridge? So the uh, goal of our bridge is to grab all the weight up top and it's going to put all the force on these legs that's backed up against the wall and that's what's going to keep the weight up and hopefully keep our bridge from falling apart. I gotta say, these bridges were pretty impressive if I say so myself and they gathered quite the huge crowd during second and third block. Well that's all I have for you today. Back to you guys. 
I was out there watching for a little bit. It was really intense. It was really cool. I heard that the winning bridge uh, was built by Craig McCoy and Michael Petrie. Wow. Yeah. Girls, interested in playing club volleyball? Come to our pre-tryout clinic this Sunday in the Bonner Gym. See the website for more information, including times, at sierragoldvb.com. Dear student drivers, please do not park in the staff area. That includes the Bonner Gym parking lot and the tennis courts. Your vehicle will be ticketed and potentially towed if you continue. I know there are a lot of students here at Del Oro who love going to the mall on their free time. Here's the Beaks, Caitlin, to show and tell us a little bit about the new part of the mall. On October 6th, the new part of the mall opened just in time for the Christmas shopping season. There are many new stores in the renovated area that have opened in the mall, along with some of the old stores that had gotten damaged were seen back again too. The new part of the mall looks really good and so many of the stores are having great sales in celebration of the mall's reopening. If you haven't started your Christmas shopping yet, Make sure that you check out the mall and all of their great new stores, and take part in all of the amazing sales that they have going I went there last week. It looked really nice. Yeah, it's actually very nice, and it's been really crowded ever since. Yeah. Well, that's all we have for you today, Delaro. From our crew here at The Beak, I'm Anya. And I'm Haley. Have a great day, Dio.